This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Speed weeks may be over in Florida, but racing is still in full bore. We step aside from the two and a half mile trioval in Daytona and head about 30 minutes west for tonight's race in Volusia County for the inaugural iRacing Late Model Showdown. The half mile clay oval of Volusia Speedway Park hosts tonight's iRacing special event tour off with the 850 horsepower, 2200 pound monsters that we call the Dirt Super Late Models. It's myself, Corey Silva, in the booth tonight, along with my longtime colleague and, as I call, dirt specialist, Brandon Krutz, giving you the calls here tonight on the iRacing eSports Network, presented by Primetime Racing TV. And, well, Brandon, I know this is right up your alley. This is exactly what you want to be doing, and we're covering the dirt racing action at Volusia tonight. Man, what are you expecting tonight here on the clay? Man, you know, Corey, it's Friday night. We're here on the, the clay, and uh, I'm expecting some really gl good close racing from some really, really good competition out here tonight at Volusia, and uh, Florida weather looks pretty good right now. Yes, it is. It's late. Well, sunset is uh, just on the cusp here. We're going to be going all the way through, turning the lights on here for a feature. we got 40 cars here that are going to be fighting for a 24 car feature event here tonight give you a little bit of a breakdown on exactly how it is going to operate we are at least in preliminary terms we're going to have four heats of 10 cars each two of each are going to advance to the feature and then we'll have two consolation races 16 cars each and well half of each of those fields eight apiece will advance to the feature and Add them on up. That's going to be 24 drivers going for 50 laps here again at Volusia Speedway Park, the I Racing Late Model Showdown. Brandon, this is kind of the uh, the the starter race in the season. I Racing has a whole lineup of races to emulate important real world events. Daytona 500 being one. We're going to go to Indy. We're going to go to Bathurst. We're going to well, we already have gone to Bathurst, Sebring, all that. So a very big event to start off the calendar uh, again on the dirt here tonight. Yeah, and what a cool sight it is starting off kind of that chain of events here on the dirt side of things, kind of where everything starts to begin with, Corey, right here on the clay. And these guys, some of the best of the best on the iRacing service, going to be taking laps around the famous Volusia Speedway Park. Yep, and uh, currently practice is uh, just about to conclude itself in about 40 seconds, and then we're going to switch over to these guys turning some single car runs for qualifying, and that'll set them up for their appropriate heat races. So, again, want to thank everybody for tuning in to the iRacing Esports Network. You probably haven't seen PTR TV too much on the network, but we're proud to be presenting coverage of this race tonight, so I hope you do like what you see and enjoy the show here on a Friday night. And, well, fastest car thus far in practice is Kendall Tucker with a 16.07. So uh, we'll see how he does fare once this does switch over to qualifying and where he is going to get himself situated. And, well, it looks like that is going to be right about now. These guys will turn their final practice laps, and uh, it'll be time trials around this half mile. 
And you know, something around, uh, oh, regarding time trials, Corey, is, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily, especially with heat racing, it doesn't determine where you're going to be starting in the race. It determines where you're going to be lining up for your heat race. So something other than, uh, say, something like a pill draw, um, just luck of the draw, where you'll be starting, you really want to qualify good. Uh, you, you know, you really want to try to start up front in your heat races. And I think the goal for most people is... Uh, well, get lucky on the times further back in the pack and maybe start somewhere up front, whether it be Heat 3 or Heat 4. Yeah, and that's uh, obviously what matters. So the Heats themselves, as you said, they're not going to be taking too many drivers, only two apiece. So, I mean, all, only having 20% uh, of the field transfer through. You're going to be seeing a lot of these drivers, Brandon, heading into those consolations. So you, you do want to have the best position you can for your Heat to see if you are able to transfer because, you know, the pressure of having to make it in the BNC mains is going to be a, a situation you don't want to be in if you can avoid it. Yeah, absolutely. That is right, Corey. And uh, you want to have that comfort of running fast in the heats, you know, through time trials, first of all. And then you want to stay clean in the heats and, and just run it through. You want to be able to transfer immediately into that future event. That's a huge weight lifted off the shoulders of these drivers if they can get that done. Yep, and right now we are watching the times go in. It's a 16-1-2-6 for Thomas Coggins. Top of the board thus far, Chad Carter, Devin Ryan. Uh, that's Jason Minat and David Kalb. The top five thus far still waiting on some heavy hitters to turn some laps. We have uh, Zach Leonardi in the field. Hasn't turned a lap yet. Uh, let's just see who else is on the racetrack right now. Turn some laps around, seeing where they can be. We're watching the 18, uh, Hayden Carwell on the track. He has yet to turn a lap. Still uh, plenty of time for these guys, and plenty of cars still waiting to turn these laps. Yeah, absolutely. Still Coggins at the top of the leaderboard right now. These guys trying to get at it, but uh, things looking pretty good. That's a solid lap up there at the, the top of the leaderboard right now for Coggins and these guys, they're going to try to go out they're going to try to compete uh, so far, nobody's been able to take that spot away from them. And then Brandon, just something also to note with uh, maybe people watching who are not as aware of the uh, the dirt side of iRacing well, we're going to be doing quite a lot of racing here tonight in all these heats, and we know how dynamic the dirt surfaces are and how that does affect the racing and how these cars handle. So what are we going to be dealing with when we get to the feature with all this racing? How different is this speedway going to be for these guys? Uh, well, I'll tell you, Corey, by the end of the 50-lap feature, this track is going to be... It's going to be rutted up, it's going to be bumpy, it's going to be slicked over. These guys are going to be struggling for grip. It's really going to be a lot of throttle control going on here, and especially with how much horsepower these super late model vehicles do have, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, and I think it'll provide for some pretty close racing. Uh, these guys are really going to have to be careful, though. Yeah, they're going to have to be careful. You don't want to get in the slick. You don't want to make a move too much and maybe get into a competitor and take him out. But uh, obviously, it is a possibility here. We uh, we see passing in many different regards here on the dirt tracks. And again, we're still waiting. Again, full field, all just about 35 cars here. So there's going to be quite a lot of racing, quite a lot of activity uh, here at Volusia. Just give you a quick analysis of uh, the weather conditions here in Florida here tonight. Oh, don't mind the circle graphic. Apologies in the middle, four tenths of a mile around Volusia, but you can see 73 degrees in the air, 72 in the track. Uh, pretty negligible wind there. So again, the, the dirt, the, the weather maybe not going to be as much of a factor, Brandon, but we can already see just since the start of practice, the, the sun is going down on the horizon. Soon the lights are going to be turning on here at Volusia, and it's going to be a true uh, Friday night, rather, short track for battle. Yeah, Friday night under the lights out here at the Volusia Speedway Park. Not anything better than this, Corey. Uh, you know, racing season around me is going to be coming up here very soon, and I'm excited to be back at the clay myself. And I'll tell you what, iRacing has made me uh, get through a lot of the off season so far, the real life stuff, and just because of how realistic everything actually is. Yes, that most certainly it is, and I'll tell you, from a, uh, a broadcaster and a racer, it is a, 
it is a breath of fresh air, I will say safely say, to be uh, maybe on the a different side of Florida and kind of at a different track. We've uh, we've obviously been a lot of racing at the, the road course at Daytona, at the Oval at Daytona, but we're in Florida. We're ready for Volusia. We're ready for some dirt track action, and that's what's going to be going off right now. These guys will just be starting up on the grid in a moment for the first heat of the night and there they are so we'll uh we'll get it going for you what is going to be the starting order for heat number one here tonight heat number one is going to be dylan hauser leading it down dylan fox p2 kendall tucker in third J jordan casey tyler dushaw marston austin yarborough john fiddler J jeremy capron and andrew farnas the nine cars in heat number one Nine cars going to be starting off tonight's chain of events here, folks. First time we're going to be going racing here on the night. And, uh, well, it should be pretty good. Before we get things rolling, a huge shout out to iRacing for making this service possible. From World of Outlaws, Dirt Car, NASCAR, IMSA, IndyCar, and uh, many more sanctions here. iRacing is uh, bringing you this awesome action here tonight. And uh, if you like what you see, iRacing.com, folks. If you're not subscribed yet, if you're not a member yet, definitely be sure to check them out. And uh, awesome service, probably the most realistic that you'll ever get. Yeah, all of those statements extremely true, which was why we are so proud to uh, be a part of the network and help cover all the action. And our uh, track map, as I've uh, been pointed out various times, as I knew, not quite accurate. But Brandon, in a way, my track map was a circle, which isn't entirely accurate. But Volusia is not your standard oval uh, configuration. In many ways, it almost is a circle with uh, how the backstretch turn two through three really is. Yeah, Corey. Um an inadvertent that, that's mistake not that kind of worked out. <laughs> that, that's not wrong, and it brings up a pretty good topic here, is that at Volusia, you're pretty much turning most of the time. It's very wide street sweeping corners and uh, well, pretty short straightaways. So, yeah, so kind uh, of a, the penicillin method. It was a mistake that kind of worked out because... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll save ourselves on that one, but uh, the lights will be out. Two pace laps are on the docket. One has been completed, so pace truck will pull off this time by. Brandon, we are going to get heat number one underway. Pace truck going to be making its way into pit lane this time by. These guys heading down the back straightaway now. It's going to be that number one machine, Dylan Hauser. Going to be bringing these guys to the green flag for the, for the first time tonight. And these guys gonna get things underway here ladies and gentlemen the Volusia Speedway Park we're ready to go we're underway heat number one is underway and the one got the jump right off the bat into corner number one the five machine Kendall Tucker try to go to the inside of the 35 Dylan Fox take p2 right off the bat he's gonna go side by side into three with that attempt still under file still side by side Jordan Casey behind them in four try to figure out where to go Battle for second place. Kendall Tucker wants that position bad. Now that is going to end up being the transfer spot into the feature. Kendall Tucker right on the back bumper to that 35 machine now. And you're going to see the bottom of the track still where you're going to want to be. The top has a lot of work to do before it is uh, slicking into the point where it's more competitive. But that five still going to dig down there. And you got to be careful. He might open the door for the top just to get that momentum on the exit of the corner for the 20. Not happening yet, but something he has to watch out for in his mirror. Throttle control is going to be key here, Corey, as uh, Kendall Tucker, he's going to fall back a little bit now, maybe going to have company from that 20 machine back there, but throttle control is going to be key as things are starting to get a little bit slick down there at the bottom of the racetrack. These guys really, they want to power off, but they can't. They really got to ease it on. Yeah, remember, we got 850 horsepower, 2,200 pounds of these beasts here trying to go around a very small, tight track here at Volusia. So again, throttle control, as you said, is of the essence, but they are starting to spread out a little bit. Our leader has about a two car length lead over Dylan Fox and Fox has about that three four car length lead that uh, he will have over the transfer spot but he's not looking at the transfer spot Brandon he's looking for the win he is starting to close in on Hauser 
Dylan Fox, he drifts, drifted up a little bit too high there off of two that last time by him, and now off of four. He's going to maybe try to power off the high side, and uh, well, he lost a little bit of ground right there. Also, he had his eyes set, and now he's starting to fall back. I'll tell you, he is getting a little bit of bite up there right on the top of the groove there in one and two. He's going to take it to the top in three and four as well. Not to, uh, not as advantageous that time for him. But look at him in one and two. This is where he's making it work. He's very nearly to the right rear quarter panel with three laps to go. Just about, but not quite. Is uh, These guys put on... A pretty good show actually carrying some more speed than I thought they could on the high side this early in the race and uh, uh, well that 35 machine Fox he's gonna make it work right now and he's actually not falling back as much as I thought either is he's gonna dunk it down to the bottom this time by this is gonna be the white flag lap for heat number one he dug it all the way to the bottom of the track didn't quite work he's gonna go right to the top where that's where it's been working for him that's where he's been getting the momentum I don't think he's gonna get enough he is not going to unless there's a mistake Hauser is going to take a safe line into three, a nice dive on in for Fox, no, nothing doing there, so heat number one is going to go to Dylan Hauser. Heat number one to Dylan Hauser, it's going to be Fox and Tucker rounding out your top three for heat race number one of the night. All right, and remember the top two of them are going to take it into the feature event, but we have uh, three more heat races to go, so let's show you where they're going to start for heat number one two on the night. It's going to be Lewis Hewitt leading this heat with Jacob Fields in second. Tyler Hudson, obviously a big name in the iRacing staff in P3. We're going to have Cole Newhoffen. I'm going to go with in the fourth spot. Nick Daffern in fifth. David Kalb in sixth. Jimmy Mullis, Zach Novak, and Bryson Daffern. The nine cars in heat number two. So, heat race number two, looking about ready to go here now as Pace Truck going to roll off and these guys are going to get ready to go green flag racing and uh, they're going to be uh, stacked up, doubled up, and they're going to be getting ready to go here, Corey. And yep, you can see right here, Brand, we talked about the lights coming on. There they are off in the, uh, off in the scenery. You can see the lights coming on here. So. Just adding to the flair of the Friday night short track racing. And well, what we saw, Brandon, that was re very important for the transfer spot in heat number one was that start that the pole sitter got ultimately won him the race. And we saw the quick battle for second and third that fizzled out. So I think this initial start in these quick 10 lap heats is going to be very important for your front row. I think the biggest thing too, Corey, is that these guys, they're racing close enough together to that if you make any one little mistake, it's going to bring that guy behind you right up to your rear bumper and uh, really no mistakes can be made. Yeah, you make that one mistake, you're just going to bring that guy back into it and is there going to be a three wide or are you going to lose, lose a position perhaps going for one? We do see that one all the time as well, but... We're uh, getting ready for the green flag. Pace truck will momentarily pull off into the Volusia pit road. And again, heat number two, another 10 laps on the docket here tonight. They're on the throttle, green flag in the air for heat race number two. Now, and look at the start that your leader got. He got a good start, but that 23 of Hudson really was going for money there in turn number one. It kind of backfired on him because now Fields on the outside. He's going to try to wind that up like the other driver was in the first heat, but Lewis Hewitt in the lead. He's going to get lap number one without contest. Battle for the transfer spot now. Fields has the advantage up, running that higher groove. Tyler Hudson going to be right behind him in that 23 machine. Down, down through quarter number three and four. Out of quarter number four. Fields now maybe going to look for the lead. Nothing doing so far, but he's going to try again. Yeah, he's going to take a power move to the inside of the seven of Hewitt. That's going to be for the lead. He's going to clear him into three. The seven's going to get hit from Hudson and go around. Oh, he keeps it straight. Nobody else involved. And uh, the, he's going to keep it going. Unbelievable. But he's going to be far out of that transfer spot now. Now the transfer in the hands of Newoffen. Newoffen has the transfer, and he doesn't really have much of a contest behind it. They're going to be three wide for third. Just behind that, Hudson, Kalb, and uh, Daffern. The 30 all the way to the top of the track. You can see the 25 underneath trying to power down in there. Hudson trying to figure out where to go as he lost all that positions after that contact. Man, oh man. And these guys 
They're in uh, quite the bunch up back there right now. The 25 machine now going to be looking underneath the 30, and they're going to be side by side, and they got even more company now. Yeah, we're bringing right. Who is that? That's the 10 of Jimmy Mullis. And the, uh, the, he is in the back of this pack waiting to try to pounce at any opportunity. They're going to nearly be three wide again off of four as we're coming to three to go. And they're three wide in one. Three wide seems to be the normal here in heat race number two. These guys going all out. Now Tyler Hudson going to be looking underneath. He's going to try to take that position away. Down at a corner number four. Not quite going to get there. The 30 has been on the money on the top groove of one and two. Hudson's going to pull a slider. The 30 is going to try to pull a crossover. He can't do it because the 25 is underneath him of Kalb. And he's going to try to go down in there again. The 30 nearly makes contact with Hudson. But they are going to be side by side. 30 and 25 off of four. That's going to be the white flag. And this oh, racing is Excuse me. This racing isn't even for the transfer spot, Corey. These guys are far, far away from that second position. These guys racing just uh, just for the positions at this point. Yeah, right now. Now we're on the white flag. I'm a little, me a little over anxious there. That's Jacob Fields. He's out by one second over Newhaven. Newhaven in second has a, a good two seconds over uh, Hudson. So Hudson's going to have to work in the consolations. But your winner is going to be Jacob Fields in heat number two. Fields, Newhoff, and, and Hudson round out your top three in heat race number two. Man, and uh, the guys of heat three going to have to follow that one up. Yeah, that was definitely something to watch, Brandon. We saw a lot more, uh, almost you want to say pack racing, if you will. Guys, just you don't have anywhere to go when everyone's right there. So it kind of makes those positions a lot harder to get and a lot more dangerous to go for. But... That was good to watch, and well, we got another one on our hands right now, heat number three. Starting order is going to be Thomas Coggins on the front row, along with Blake Cannon on the outside of the front row. Chris McGuire and Chad Carter in row two, Dan Smolders and Garrett Robinson in row three, and then rounding out your nine car field, Ricky Sanders, Scott Schroyer, and John Batista. So yet another, Corey, I'll tell you, there's a really strong field of cars out here racing tonight, and uh, there's a lot of names to watch out for, and uh, it's going to be interesting come feature time to see who's in and who isn't, because either way, I think there's going to be a couple of names that everybody may expect to be in the feature, but aren't. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be 16 guys, or about, no, actually about 11 guys going home, I think, if the math works out, but and another, another thing to note is... This is not the only one of these races this weekend. If a guy has a bad run, our partners at Race Spot are going to be covering, I think there's two of these races tomorrow. Uh, Race Spot will be covering another one on the iRacing Esports Network. So if you like what you see, Volusia Racing here in the, uh, the iRacing Late Model Showdown, you got plenty more racing this weekend to keep up with. Absolutely. And. Uh... There's going to be three three nights of this, or three three days of this racing. There's going to be, as Corey said, two tomorrow. There's one on Sunday also. So should be some awesome racing all around. And uh, Brandon, you know my dirt skills. I will let these guys do their thing. I have no business out on this track. I'm just going to sit here and watch them from afar and watch the great racing that we have been seeing. Thomas Coggins on the front row with Blake Cannon. We know how important that front row is. Those are the transfer spots. Everybody else is going to be digging for it. But the pace truck is going to take the hard left, and we're going to wait for Coggins to get on the loud pedal. There he goes early in the box. Green flag racing for heat number three. Good start for that 14 machine now down at a corner number 127. Maybe going to try to look to the inside here, but he's got company as well. Here comes a three. That three machine, that's Chris McGuire. He's going to try to dig all the way to the bottom of the track. The 27 is going to dig to the bottom because the 14 of Coggins went really high off a of four. It'll hold the lead, but not by much. Man, I'll tell you, that three machine of McGuire, he found some grip there that last time off four, lifted that left front right off the ground, but he's going to try to be on the hunt there for that transfer spot. Yeah, that 27, he's gonna dig, He's trying to dig not to hold on to the transfer spot. He's trying to dig for the lead. He was trying to rock that low groove in three and four. Just, you could hear him just pedal in the throttle, trying not to yard out too much, trying to hold the momentum. The three nearly to the back bumper. The 27 has to back off. It's a three-way battle for the lead right now. Not even focusing yet. The transfer right now, 14, 27, and the three all going for the same position. 
And that three is really working that inside groove, washing out the track, trying to keep off of the 27, trying to avoid contact. The 27 going for the lead at the same time. They're three-way oh, contact. Oh, man. Oh, man. How did he save that car? And still going for the lead. He's just that daggamn good. That 27 of Blake Cannon got turned there. But when he got turned to the left rear, if anything, Brandon, it helped him turn and hold the low line on the bottom of one and two. Man, oh man, now he's going down, ducking underneath the 14 machine, almost a little bit of contact there off of corner number two, and the three machine, he's falling back, but the battle for the lead is still going on. Yes, it is, and you can see the 27, he's been dedicated to the low side of the track in three and four, he's been dedicated to the low side of the track in one and two, now he's going to push the 14 all the way up, the 14 is going to go test all the loose dirt up there on the top of the track, it worked for him, it didn't work for Cannon, now Cannon lost a couple car lengths, and as did McGuire. Blake Cannon to that 27 machine. Now he's falling a little bit back from the lead. Here comes that three machine once again. McGuire, and he's got a company himself, but he's got his eyes out of that P2 position. Yeah, McGuire needs to get that P2 if he wants the immediate transfer so he doesn't have to do the B and C main, but there's going to be two laps to go, and it's going to be tough for him, but it'll be a lot easier if these two leaders are going at it, but that three also has Chad Carter battling him. That's going to be side by side. Well, it was for the moment for that third spot, but we got to watch this battle for the win as we take the white flag lap. White flag is in the air. Final time around for heat race number three. Cannon looking for the lead. Right now, Goggins trying to defend down in a quarter number three. He's going to try to dive it down in. Not going to get there. Goggins is too strong off four. He gets the heat win. Yeah, he tried to dig that bottom of the racetrack, but just not enough momentum down there. That top is already starting to come in. It worked in Coggins' favor, but luckily for the 27, he's going to transfer in either way. And, uh, Brandon, we're headed to the fourth and final of the heats before we head to the Concies. So let's get you the starting lineup for this, the final of four heat races here at Volusia. We're going to be starting with Zach Leonardi on the front row, Hayden Cardwell on the outside of the front row, Randall Carter in third, Devin Ryan in fourth, Jason Minat in fifth, J.D. Brown in sixth, and then it's eight drivers in this race, Dustin Hall and Cody Olson will round out the eight cars in heat number four. The iRacing official pace truck rolls off once again. These guys... Follow it up. Two really good heat races, Corey, and uh, there's been a lot of action throughout every race so far tonight. Yeah, the first one was, I mean, in all respect, first one a little bit of a dud, but the action's been really cranking up in each heat, and it's only going to get better. We have the two consolations, and of course, the 50 lap feature, and that's the one you want to win. That is the one where the pride and the points are assessed, so. I can't wait, but we're not quite there yet, Brandon. We're coming off four, and uh, it's going to be one more pace lap for uh, to get heat number four underway. You got to give Heat One credit, nevertheless, going out there. Well, the compared first to what we've been out. seeing, Heat Number <laughs> One. I mean, the, the, the first Heat out, they were testing uh, testing the waters and you know seeing uh, seeing what the track was going to be like, and everybody else sitting back and watching, going, "Yeah, we could do we could do better than that." And uh, so far, so good. Heat Race Number Four on track, getting ready to go. Yes, it is. It's going to be as we said, Leonardi and Cardwell are going to be the front row, and then we're going to have uh, Carter and Ryan in P, well, row number two, rather, as we're coming through three and four. Pace truck is just taking that hard left in, and already on the throttle is Leonardi. Green flag in the air. Look at the jump he gets right off the get-go. Yeah, he got a really good start there, but not to say he doesn't still have company. It's the 18 machine, Cardwell. He's got his eyes set, but he's got company as well from Carter. Oh, we have contact back there in the field. The 17 had a little bit of contact from the 6 of J.D. Brown. Everyone does get by nice and safely, but we do have a battle. That is for the fourth spot. That's uh, Minat and Ryan going for it. Minat in the number 26 machine try to hold off the 17 of Ryan. They'll be door-to-door -door off of four. 26 will hold on off the top groove. Jason Manat kind of trying to make that top groove work right up against that loose stuff. So far, so good working out for him. Going up ahead now, battle between the 18 and the 22. The 18 trying to rim ride it. That's, uh, that's going to be Randall Carter. 
And, uh, 18 sails it into one, trying to get to the left rear Leonardi and maybe wash him off the track a little bit. Didn't work, but the time he lost on that, about three tenths of a second. And look at him sail it off into three. Open the door on the bottom for Carter. Cardwell, rocking a high side. As I say that, he ducks down low now. Going to be trying to look for that lead. And again, we have a three-way battle. Three-way battle for the lead with six laps to go. They're just kind of, you know, crossover, slide job, crossover, slide job. 4-2, P2, which is the transfer slot. At the moment, it is Cardwell holding on, but not by watching. Of course, Cardwell just still looking for the lead on Leonardi as well. Carter wants that transfer position right into the feature. That 22 machine, he's looking right on the back bumper now, right at that low side, and he's going to try something different now, right at that high groove, down through corner numbers one and two. Now, Brandon, on the entry of three, I want to watch it here. Look, at it's almost like a little mini whoop section there. It's starting to run up on the entry of the corner, and that's only going to get worse as the Conti's in the feature uh, come to us. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier in the program. These ruts are going to build up pretty big. And, uh, despite not having that much grip already from the slick, you're going to have to worry about those ruts as well. Bounce the rear end around. And that's just going to add to the challenge, but that's what makes these drivers earn their, earn their skills, earn their ratings, as they've been proven over the test of time to be able to do this stuff and adapt to the dynamic track conditions that are being uh, thrown at them tonight. But... Leonardi has kind of uh, pulled away from the battling for the moment and the white flag will be in the air for the final heat and he has the lead but this is the transfer spot I don't think the 22 is close enough but let's see if he's going to take a stab at it going down into quarters three and four not gonna happen heat winner it's gonna be going to Leonardi Cardwell in second Carter third Manette in fourth Yep, so now we are going to take the two drivers, Leonardi and Cardwell, and we're going to take the remainder of the drivers who did not transfer, so set third on back in all the heats. Well, half of them anyways are going to be joining us for, uh, Brandon, I'm not the dirt guy. Is this the C main or the B main? We're going to have, we have a C main and a B main, and then we're going to be going into a five-minute warm-up and then the 50-lap feature event. Right now, these guys are going to be lining up for the C-Main 8 transfer to the feature. All right, so the C-Main is on our uh, list right now, and it's going to be Kendall Tucker leading it down. Chris McGuire, Jordan Casey, Chad Carter, John Fiddler, the top five. The remainder will scroll by on the screen. We're going to have 13 drivers in this, Brandon going for uh what was it eight spots eight cars are gonna be transferring to the main event here from the c main and uh well these guys are gonna be going after it this is their last chance to get into the feature event yes it is as we've already locked in eight drivers and of course we have a 24 car grid so we need 16 more so do the math eight in each race is what we're gonna be doing here tonight and well, that's going to put the transfer spot right in the middle of the pack, Brandon. We've seen these packs. We've seen all the crazy sliders, the contact in the middle of the field. Well, that's going to be where the transfer spot is, so just amp that up to the next level. That's what I expect to see in these next two heats, or well, these next two uh, consolations. I'm still getting used to this dirt terminology. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys stacked up, doubled up, ready to go racing once again, and I'll tell you, a few heavy hitters in the consolation races. I was, I was saying before, uh, the heavy hitters of the Consi that are going to be trying to get their way up into the feature. The lights are out up on top of the iRacing official yeah. pace truck one more time around before John, we go green. We have John Fiddler. We have Tyler Ducharme. Those are two drivers that were in the... Uh, the World Cups, though the World Championship series of dirt, so they are obviously drives you don't expect to see getting sent home, but they're going to have to make something happen if they are going to make it to the feature here tonight. Brandon, I'll let you take it down here as the uh, pace truck is off of two and down the back stretch. These guys going to be getting ready to go green flag racing for the C main. The iRacing official pace truck is in. These guys are on the throttle. Corey, we're underway once again. We are in the five machine. Got the jump right off the bat. And look at this mess behind him. Four wide down at a corner, number two. And now almost three wide up for the lead. 
Oh my goodness, what do we watch right now? Cars are absolutely everywhere, but nobody's wrecked yet. That's what exactly what we want to see. The lead you know, seems to be the only safe position at the moment for Kendall Tucker, but we're battling for second. We're battling all the way back from the top 10. I saw three wide, three rows deep. They're three wide once again at a quarter number four. I think these guys are confused. We're not at Daytona, so uh, got to not tone it down a little bit. Just make sure we don't wreck, and they're doing a great job of that. We do start to settle out at least in the top five right now. Remember, eighth spot is the transfer right now. Well, Garrett Robertson has it, but someone is doing him to the inside. That's the 11 machine of Ducharme. Yeah, coming down out of quarter number two now. Transfer spot is heating up now. Currently held by the 11, nope, but there's a slider. Contact, contact from the 31 machine. Yeah, that 31 machine sent it on in there. That's Garrett Robinson, but Austin Yarborough is the one that has the transfer at the moment. But again, Ducharme with the sl with the power move to the inside. It's getting slick and slow down there, but Ducharme trying to dig, trying to dig. The momentum on the outside carries over contact into one. A little bit of contact. These guys really trying to fight for this transfer spot. This is the last chance to get into the heat. The 11 now sails it off for the eighth position. Yes, he does, but that 33 is not going to roll over and play dead. Well, he may have to un uh, not unintentionally. What's that happen up front? The three of McGuire is slow. Wow, that's something that we didn't expect to see. So now things got a little bit more interesting. Trying to see what happened to the three. Well, we can, and uh, looks like off of four, uh, some major contact really sent him into the outside wall on the front stretch. I wonder if he has some suspension damage from that. That would not surprise me one bit. So now on the bubble in that 33 machine, that's Yarbrough. And, and, he's, uh, and he's pretty safe in it for the moment, but he does have Ricky Sanders a half second thrill, three tenths of a second back. So he's going to have to hold that sit that 15 behind him. And uh, he has come to six more laps to do it. Just uh, as reference, folks, up front, uh, Kendall Tucker, rather, up by over a second over Jordan Casey, John Figler in third, J Jeremy Capron, and uh, Chad Carter, your top five. And all these guys are good. We just want to keep our eyes on that transfer spot in case it heats up. And I think it's going to. That 15's digging. Five laps to go now in the C main. And yeah, things are starting to heat up here. The 15 machine, Sanders, that's Ricky Sanders. He's gonna try to find a way around and he's falling back a little bit now. Gonna try to get that run off. He's digging on that outside. He ran just a little bit higher, was able to get in the throttle just a little bit earlier, a little bit longer. 33 oh, into the inside wall. 33 into the inside wall, slows him up. The 15 has to back off to avoid spinning both of them out. Actually hurt him more than it hurt the 33. He's going to try again, living life on the edge right now. Now he's going to go up to the high side and see if he can make ground up there. And I think that's the move that he needs to make. That's what's going to work for him. He's going to be side by side. He was climbing the rut there, nearly into the fence. Oh, the 33 seals push. on the mission. The 15 with the crossover, side by side, coming to two to go. Two laps to go. Here's a transfer position now. The 15 on the low side, 33 up high. Right now it's to the 15 and now 33. He's gonna try to strike back. Coming to the white flag lap. The top positions are nothing really to worry about right now. This is what we're going for for the transfer. The 33 got the position off of four, pulled away, but I think the 15 is in send it rage. He's gonna have to if he's gonna wanna make it. He's gonna dive it on in there into three. 33 has the advantage of the top. The 15 can't hold oh it down my. there. It's gonna be Yarborough transferring. Austin Yarborough. Put it on a show, getting that transfer into the feature event. Unbelievable. Folks, that's just to get into the feature race. We haven't even gotten to the main action, but look at what these guys are doing for it. This means a lot to them. Incredible. So now, the final preliminary event, the B Main here tonight on PTR TV on the eSports Network. We'll give you the rundown for this, and it's going to be Tyler Hudson leading it down, Randall Carter, Nick Dafford, Jason Minat, Jimmy Mullis, Devin Ryan, Zach Novak, J.D. Brown, David Kalf, and uh, top 10 is Dustin Hall. The remainder will scroll by on the screen, and 
Well, Brandon, as we talked about with the dirt, the dynamics of the surface are really starting to come in play. We saw how ruddy, well, ruddy, uh, is that a word? Ruddy? I don't know. Just go with it. All right, we'll go with it. We've seen how <laughs> ruddy turn three is getting, and it really started to throw those guys off. And that transfer battle only going to get worse as the race goes. The race goes on. Yeah, uh, unbelievable racing so far. Might I just add? I am not one bit disappointed right now at the Volusia Speedway Park. And, uh, what a great racetrack with a bunch of great racers. Is uh, uh, I was speechless at the end of that last race. <laughs> well, yeah, I had to catch my breath after that, and it is on my list. I will look up and confirm if ruddy is actually a word. It is going to bother <laughs> me, but fans, you could help me figure out. But uh, anyways, we're coming to one to go in this, and uh, again, Hudson, remember, he had that contact in his heat, ended up sending somebody around, and he ended up getting out of the transfer position and anywhere near it. So uh, he's going to be in a good position at least to transfer in this. But again, anything can happen, especially with how this racing has gone thus far. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, I think right now, Tyler Hudson, he's got his eyes set on just walking away with this. Hopefully he needs a good restart and uh, he needs everybody else to play nice. Tyler Hudson going to be leading these guys to the green flag. Pace truck is in. They're on the throttle. We're underway once again. Yeah, Hudson with the jump, as everyone has been getting. That'll send him off into turn one without any kind of issue. But here there's, here's the wad. Here is the absolute jungle. Second on back. Uh, man, oh man, two, three, four wide behind these guys down at a quarter number four this time around. Yeah, into one and two we come, and uh, looks like well, Hudson has the advantage by a little bit, but uh, behind that third on back, even fourth on back rather, starts with Devin Ryan and Nick Daffer in 17 and the 30. A little bit of contact there. The oh, 10 on the man. bottom. The 10 on the bottom. That's Jimmy Mullis. That's for the fifth spot. We're going to the transfer spot. That's right now. It's the six on the outside, but look at the gaggle for that transfer. Yeah, the transfer position at... I can't say it's been heating up because it's already hot. Off of four. They almost four wide. Look at this. Three by three at a dirt track. Three Contact. by We're three. Around. Oh, they keep it straight for the most part. That's Bryson Daffer, and he's going to take it behind the wall after some contact. But back to the action. Again, the transfer spot right now is the 25 day, uh, David Cobb, rather. He's trying to hang on, but that... Uh, Underneath him, that's J.D. Brown, and up top of him is Nick Daffern. Things really heated up now. That eighth position, three wide for the transfer spot out of four. 30 is going to get the right rear into the fence. The 25 is going to dig right down there. The six is running right against that inside wall, digging it down there nice and smooth. And 30 is going to lose a spot. Six is going to dig right down to the inside wall. 30 is really trying to push that cushion up all the way up there, trying to get it all the way up to the wall. Didn't work for him, but kind of singles out for the moment. And look at their three wide for uh, third, fourth, and fifth right now. Yeah, absolutely. Man, oh man, these guys racing all through the field right now. And right now it's Brown on the bubble for that transfer position, but he's worried about what's up ahead of him. These guys are really going at it. Yes, they are. And again, up front, Hudson up by three quarters of a second over Carter. And then uh, we have Jason Mina and Jimmy Balls. And then this is what we're watching. Uh, it's actually fifth on back right now. That 29 machine of Zach Novak looking to the inside of Ryan, who's looking to the inside of Mullis at the same time. These guys going at it now. Going to be two by two down alpha quarter number four. The 25 machine down low. Zach Novak going to be up high. That 29 machine now going to be three wide once again. That 17 of Ryan was kind of a traffic break there for the, the row behind him. The 29 and the 25 really kind of slowed him up just a little bit. You saw right behind them. That was a six of J.D. Brown dead sideways. Brown oh, into the contact. wall. Contact between the 10 and the 17. 17's going to prevail out of that one. Yep, so this battle's still going on, and as we're coming to four laps to go, let's kind of assess where the transfer is right now. It's Lewis Hewitt in the uh, 7 machine, but he doesn't have much buffer because that's John Batista right behind him looking to the inside. John Batista trying to make something happen here. Nick Daffer in a fast car that got shuffled back right behind this as well. 
JB John Batista going to try to make something happen to that number 19 machine. He wants it, but the feature also. He's going to try to make something happen on that seven machine. He's got to do slow it now. Car up top oh. there off a of two. They get by him just fine. Well, I guess that was easier done than said to get into the transfer position for John Batista. Maybe not. I don't think that was for position, Corey. No, that was just a slower car. It was kind of a tight situation, but uh, they all get by just fine. It is still going to be Hewitt for the moment going for the transfer. They're three wide ahead of him. We'll see if anything happens. Uh, can Batista make a power move? I don't know. He is far back, but if something happens in front of him, that's going to change the situation. Here they come. Uh, Hudson takes the win without any kind of contestment. But here they come through three and four to the bottom of the track is Hewitt. And uh, he will be the eighth and final transfer into the feature. And they were beating and banging to the line for that seventh position there also. Man, oh, man. Yeah, there was not enough cameras for all that we had to watch there. That was absolutely incredible racing. And now we're going to get to uh, unwind for a little bit. And those who are transferring into the feature are going to have five minutes to uh, just shake down, kind of assess where they're going to be because remember some drivers haven't been out since heat one and well let's just say the sun was out and this track was a lot tackier back then yeah so these guys gonna shake their cars down maybe adjust their setups a little bit and uh, see what they can do under the lights ladies and gentlemen friday night under the lights nowhere better yeah i've uh, absolutely had a blast calling this and we haven't even gotten to uh into the finale where it's going to heat up even more and we will have um, a slight variant bread and remember in the feature we will have cautions on but uh the racing we have seen in all honesty i don't think based on what we've seen in the heats and the contests that we're going to even have that many cautions these guys have been racing absolutely intense as all heck that we couldn't believe but there really hasn't been many wrecks tonight luckily no, there's been equipment, a lot of equipment that's been salvaged so far. A lot of beating and banging and forward, sometimes even five wide here on the dirt. But uh, these guys have been keeping it clean and green so far. We made it through four heat races and two consolation races that, uh, well, these guys granted some really good racing action have, uh, have made it through. Yeah, they, they've done just that. and. We've seen as every session progresses, the top of the track just begins to move up even more. We saw in the first heat, you can only maybe go up a second groove. Now we're about three, four lanes up, and we really haven't seen the bottom uh, begin to prevail as much, Brand. They can kind of make it work in one and two, I've noticed, but in three and four, you really need to be up there right on the edge of the loose stuff because that's where the momentum is. Drivers on the bottom just cannot hold any kind of momentum there against the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, absolutely. If uh, seems like you either want to be right up against that inside wall or right up on the cushion, there's there's not much of an in between right now because it's just it's so worn out and so slick there through the middle, and you also have to accommodate for some of the ruts that are through there. Yeah, that top of the track, especially in three, seems to be the roughest point on the track. You can see the 29 there and. Uh... 29 trying to dust off the loose stuff there. That's that's Novak just trying to make as much racing room as he can. And see, one and two, it's harder just just because of the geometry of the track alone. One and two is a lot harder to really push it all the way up there. But you can see three and four just again. It's just the way the track's set up here at Volusia. It's not quite the circle that my uh, graphics would entail it to be, but it, it just it, it is hard. You can't really Eldora this place, Brandon, because. In Eldora, a nice perfect oval, you can really just run and kind of almost pound the wall the whole way around. You just can't really do that just the way this track is. No, and it's really hard to be consistent here also, Corey, is exactly what you just said. It's not the perfect oval. It is uh, a little bit of an odd shape oval, and uh, these guys, they have to adjust lap after lap. Yep, as the track is changing and as you're trying to make moves and of course everyone's human everyone is going to make mistakes so you just you might expect one thing to happen one lap you might think you hit your line you hit a rut or something on those lines you get slid a little bit wide and all of a sudden your lap is completely off as you're just trying to salvage your car and trying to not lose too many spots as well as not wreck the thing so a lot of things to watch and again it's going to be a 24 
car feature with 50 laps on the board. Cautions will be in play and we've uh, started in, we started a little bit earlier. We had four heats, two cars in each transfer. That was all the way in uh, kind of the late afternoon, early sunset. Now we are under the lights. Now we have a very wore out Volusia Speedway. And again, if, you, uh, if you've missed the racing earlier on, you don't want to miss what we're about to show you in about 45 seconds. Absolutely. These guys, I'm sure, also ready to go. 50 laps going to be your aim main event. Yep, 50 laps here tonight. Again, ETR TV here on the iRacing Esports Network presenting coverage of the first running of the late model showdown, the first running overall, and also the first running of the week. So more of it to come on the eSports Network later in the weekend. So be sure to stay tuned for that if you do like what you see. But enough, uh, enough waffling aside, the practice session has come to a close and these guys will get themselves situated, buckled into their cars and ready on the grid, getting ready for the final event of the night. The A-Main is here, folks. Get ready. Here is your starting lineup. On the pole here tonight in the feature event here is going to be your number one machine of Dylan Hauser. Jacob Fields is going to be on the outside of the front row. In P3 is going to be Thomas Coggins, Zach Leonardi in fourth, Dylan Fox in fifth, Cole Newf Newhoffen in sixth. In position number seven, Blake Cannon, Hayden Cardwell in eighth, Kendall Tucker in ninth, and Jordan Casey, your top ten. John Fiddler in 11th, Chad Carter in 12th, Jeremy Capron in 13th, Tyler Ducharme in 14th, Dan Smolders in 15th, and Austin Yarborough in the 16th spot. Rounding out your top 20 is Tyler Hudson, a big ticket driver all the way back there as he had to uh, get through in the concies. We have Randall Carter in 18th, Jason Minat in 19th, and Jimmy Molson 20th. And then rounding out your field, Brandon, Zach Novak, Caleb Kalb, Devin Ryan, and Lewis Hewitt, 24th spot. 24 cars rolling off the grid to go racing here tonight at the Volusia Speedway Park. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to get going. We are more than ready and we hope you are. Again, pick your drivers. You know where they're going to be starting. Start putting your, your picks in. You've seen everybody race in the various heats tonight. You've seen what everybody is capable of doing. Now it's the best of the best, the fastest of the fast. And they're going to be starting right where they uh, they approximately finished in their races. So you know the, you're going to have to watch out for that one. But that one hasn't been on the track in a very long time, Brandon. He had that little bit of warm up. But is that enough to adjust to uh, how much has changed since the beginning of the heats? Well, a lot has changed since the beginning of the heats. You got a run it up racetrack, a slick racetrack. These guys, they have to be on the edge of their seats here. They really have to have a lot of throttle control in order to get this thing to hook up. That's what is going to have to happen and going to have to calm the nerves down. Obviously, you've raced all the way to this point. This is where it matters, and everyone has the, the nerves, the butterflies in the stomach, but you got to put them away, and you got to get buckled in, buckled up tight, and ready for a green flag, which, well, it's about to be in just a moment. The iRacing Esports Network and PTR TV, the iRacing Late Model Showdown at Volusia. The feature is under green. 50 laps of racing action. Here we go down at the corner number one so far. Dylan Hauser leading the field, but he's got coming underneath him. It's going to be a battle for the lead as caution flag is on the speedway already. Looks like Dylan Fox is uh, around in two, and we knew there was going to be a lot on that rest on that initial start. We've seen all race, all, all night rather, the stack ups in the back end of the field, so. Yeah, it looks like the 22 and the 35, they were in close quarters and just a nice slow spin for Fox. Uh, he should be able to carry on just fine, but at a loss of extensive tra track position. Absolutely. So we're going to rack them and stack them once again and uh, get these guys lined up to go green flag racing once again in just a couple of laps here. And I'm not 100% on this, Brandon, but we know we've seen this a lot more common on the dirt side 
uh, in recent iterations on iRacing, where typically if we do have three cautions, a lot of times we will switch to the single file start, so uh, that is going to be something to watch for. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point. We'd love to see this thing play out, but something we will have to watch for uh, if uh, the calamity does continue. Yeah, and that's one thing that we don't want to see here, Corey. We don't want a rocky start to this event. We we really want to see these guys be able to spread out at least a little bit. And, uh, you, you know, so that way we can get some green flag laps in. 50 laps. That's a lot of time here on the dirt side. Yes, it is. A lot of things can happen, both to your car, both to the track. And you, get, you still have time to make those moves and be patient. But, you know, there's a lot going on, a lot of... Uh, a lot of hype behind this event. You want to get up there as fast as you can because while 50 laps is a lot of time, on the stopwatch printed, it's only about 10, 15 minutes of action. So you really can't take too much patience, but at the same time, you got to keep that car in one piece. That's the fine balance these drivers all have under their, uh, under their agendas here tonight. But get them going, Brandon. We're, we're about to get set. Hauser's going to be back on the throttle once again. Ladies and gentlemen, underway. Green flag once again down in a quarter number one. The nine car, he's going to try to go for the lead. Nothing doing there. Hauser's going to hold it off. And there were three. They're almost four wide heading into three. The 27 on the bottom, that's Cannon. 14 of Coggins and then the, I think New, Newhoffen was all the way at the top of the track. They survived that three wide. They're still two by two pretty much through this entire field. And we do have some carnage in the back of the field. So far, clean and green, even still, but watch out, three wide, the five, four the 14, and the 27. Oh, man. These guys are still holding it three wide up here now. 27 backs off. Someone made contact with the inside wall, almost went flying. He manages to hold it together. They were three wide. They were four wide. They're still probably three wide. Actually, it does look like they are at the latter end of the top ten. But just as reference up front, Hauser still holding the lead by about two tenths over Jacob Fields. Fields is uh, running a little bit higher line. Leonardi tried running a higher line, but a little too high of a line. Cost him a ton of time. Lap eight coming to lap number nine here at Volusia. Yeah, I would be surprised at all if we had a battle for the lead coming up very shortly is the one car. He slips up a little bit now right on the back bumper of that nine machine. He's going to look to the outside of the racetrack. Got the car, the sparks kicked up with the outside wall, but didn't cost him any time. He has, still has momentum. He's going to pull right to the back bumper. That's Fields on the back of Hauser. He's going to pull right in line. Hauser's going to go to the inside of the track as long with Fields in one and two. Yeah, he lost a little bit of ground there. Now going to see what he can do down through quarter numbers three and four. Seems to be a strong suit. Is right at a quarter four as he's got company down from behind. Yeah, there's just, well, there's company all over this racetrack right now. So it's just really a matter of just not making a mistake and not uh, getting caught up with what's in front of you because you have to watch what's behind you. What's behind you if you're Jacob Fields right now? That's Zach Leonardi in the two. Uh, what's behind him? That's a battle too. Still two and three wide behind of these guys. Don't count anybody out. We have Blake Cannon, Kendall Tucker, Thomas Coggins. They're two, three wide. Oh, they're two wide at the moment. And then, Battle uh, for the lead, Corey. Yeah, what's going on for the lead right now? Nearly three wide. The nine got all the way to the top of the one. And now Leonardi is trying to figure out where to go. He's trying to push the nine. Well, we're not at Daytona, but it almost worked. Leonardi trying to get by as well, but the nine is not having as much luck. That one's really digging on the bottom. Fields on the top, Hauser on the bottom, going to be side by side for the race lead. Right now, looks like advantage goes to that nine machine. He's going to try to take it now. He clears. Yeah, so what is that nine, that one going to do? He can't go to the top. Leonardi has a spot filled in. He's going to force himself in line there in P2. A little bit of wall contact, but now the one's going to have to reset, Brandon. He knows that nine's been working the top a little bit. He's been committed to the bottom, but he can't do anything because he's going to have to fend off that two machine. Top three trying to settle in now. They're in their own battle as they brought the rest of the field with them now with all that racing action, and they got company from behind. Yeah, Leonardi has uh, begun to have a little bit of company as the two, three wide racing has begun to fizzle out. These guys getting single file, showing what they're made of. So Blake Cannon, he is a fast driver. We'll pull up uh, just on the screen for the folks at home. We'll show you. Caution oh. flag on the speedway once again. Well, scratch that graphic. We were going to show who's the fastest in the top 10, but that has been slightly nullified. Uh, 
Trying to see if we have any cause of the caution, any evident cause. The 29 machine of Zach Novak took a loop around and uh, looks like he's going to easily be able to continue on. Just It was just enough contact with that 22 machine to bring out the caution flag and... Well, Zach Novak, not even a 360. He did a 180. He's going to spin it back around and keep going. Yeah, I mean, that's as uh, harmless as it gets, but still the flag, the flagman did decide to throw the yellow out, get everybody bunched up. But we did have about, well, that was about a 13 or so lap run, Brandon. So actually, yeah, about 13, I believe it was. So we did really start to uh, see who is who has what and I'll tell you that 27 once he was able to kind of clear the hornet's nest there he was starting to make some ground up on these leaders yeah absolutely a, a few guys were starting to make ground up on these leaders but right now the field in the hands of Jacob Fields and uh, I'll tell you a lot of these guys even further back in the pack Corey they're showing a lot of speed Yes, they are, and I do want to note, remember Tyler Hudson, he started back, uh, I think it was 19th position. He has, oh, uh, actually 17th, he has gotten himself into the top 10, so some progress by the 23, but still a lot of work to do in uh, what is probably going to be about 28 laps once we get green flag racing, but Brandon, I do want to bring out, as note, that one, remember he was really quick in the beginning, but he seemed very dedicated to the bottom, and that's what cost him the lead, that nine of Jacob Field, so... We're going to have to really watch that one. He's on the outside. He's really going to have to adjust and be a little more dynamic and try to get that outside groove working better. Yeah, every once in a while, if you've been running the same line all night, it can be a little bit sketchy trying something new, but he's going to have to do it right here and see what that high side is made of. Pace truck going to be pulling in this time around the field in the hands of Jacob Fields here. Now they're out of the throttle once again. Green flag is back in the air. Three wide for second, right off the cusp there into corner number one. Leonardi's going to slide right oh, in front of the man, one. Oh, man, oh, man. Leonardi had second for a brief moment, but the slide job didn't work. Leonardi now on the top of a three wide through two. Well, through almost, three and four, rather. Almost a four wide situation there is the one car trying to hold that second position. Now a little bit of contact for the third position. And watch out, because that one, he didn't have, he lost the lead, but he's ready to go right back forward. He sails it to the inside, door-to-door -door with the nine of Fields in three and four, but Fields is going to rock that high side, keep the momentum rolling. He's going to hang on for now, but they're side-by-side. -side. Cannon! Oh, almost a little bit of contact there between the leaders. Yeah, Cannon, remember, he has been moving up. He is a fast driver. He's trying to get third away from Leonardi, but watch out, Kendall Tucker. Where did he come from? And Hayden Cardwell right behind this as well. Man, oh man, right now they're going to be side by side for the lead once again. And Hauser just trying to hold it up there, but now he's going to have company. This is the two machine. Leonardi going to fight back once again. Leonardi has closed back in. Top three under a blanket here as the fields will still hold the lead, but you can see the one just digging just a little bit lower. That's just what he's been doing all night, whether it's been advantageous or not. He's really been trying to stay lower on the track. And look at that nine sideways. Slight oh, contact. Contacts, almost three wide for the lead. The one checked up, uh, rightfully so, to give the nine the opportunity to save it. But Leonardi took that as an opportunity to gain some time. He's going to dig to the inside of the one. And that's going to give the nine a chance to scoot away just by an inch or two. Maybe, just maybe, an, an inch or two is really all it was. That's about the time that he gains, Corey. Is, he's still going to have company from the guys behind him. And His caution flag is on the track once again. Caution on the track, and we'll, we're trying to find a car in trouble right now. It may be Jordan Casey in the 20. Uh, the 16 machine looks like, uh, or not the 16, yeah, the 16 machine uh, looks like he uh, got turned around there by the seven car yes. actually they were trying to avoid the 20 machine who was stopped up on the high side down the front stretches he took a good head-on hit to that wall i was trusting you brett i told you it was the 20 yeah, it's a... yeah, jordan case jordan casey almost went upside down off those inside tires spun it oh around oh my goodness gracious took a hit to the outside wall and if it's any reaction we just saw that replay on camera and uh i don't do we want to go on board with that 20 machine i'm not sure I don't, if we, well, I don't we know well, well we are because it, we is already the camera are. broken i don't <laughs> after oh, that hit who knows oh, that is called a tire barrier and that is called 
that is just called a whole bunch of ouch and well Casey will finish shotgun on the field but we're getting ready and around for uh, what will be another restart and Brandon who is in the top five right now that number 23 Tyler Hudson Tyler Hudson somehow found his way through the chaos that is mid-pack and uh, he's up there in the top five and now is Kendall Tucker, uh, Zach Leonardi, Dylan Hauser, and Jacob Fields are all of your top five right now and uh, you know, Fields going to be leading these guys back to the green flag once again but uh, he, that's not going to be easy for anybody to pull off the win tonight, Corey. No, it is not. That nine is uh, definitely fast. That one, if he can kind of get in his rhythm with his groove, that one is also mighty fast. We know Leonardi has been trying, just hasn't been able to succeed. And that 27 of Cannon through uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. He's all the way back in 10th now, but Pace Truck is pulling in. Early on the, on the loud pedal are your leaders. Green flag in the air, and the one got a pretty good jump to the outside, and Leonardi got a good jump to the inside. Three wide for the lead off of two. Oh, man, 20 laps to go. These guys are going all out now. Three wide for the lead. Now looking down up on the high side. It looks like it's going to be Hauser being able to sneak through. Battle for the lead. Still side by side. Contact at a quarter number one. Contact for the lead. Contact for second. Contact for fifth. Oh, Leonardi man. sideways in front of the field. Everyone's going to recover. That was a really tough call there for Leonardi. He's going to lose about three spots, but luckily he still has a vehicle. Look at the gaggle behind him. The gaggle indeed still going to be side by side for the lead also and heading down into quarter number three. Oh man. Yeah, that's the one machine of Hauser to the inside. He's trying to get that lead back from Fields caution, and the caution again. will uh, woe us down one more time. See there's about three drivers that uh, look to be slow off with four so we'll uh, come to the interpretation something happened over Ooh, there. The Let's... 16 got air. Oh my god, upside down barrel rolling with the 16, also the 22. Yeah, the 22 Randall Carter. Look at the 16, Corey. Yeah, they were in the middle of five wide off of two momentarily. And then the oh. six. Yeah, and then the 16, uh, get your air sick bag ready. Uh, but he did land it on all fours and. I don't know how I, it's I, driving, but he's still going. I, I give him a, a 9 out of 10 for that landing. And I'll be, uh, you know what, I'll be nice. We'll, we'll give it a 9 as well, and especially because he's still driving. So, But again, they were 4-5 wide. I don't know, Brandon, how they've even maintained running 3-4 wide this long. I mean, we've had our share of wrecks, don't get me wrong. But how they But been not doing as this. many as not as many as it could have been. These guys were running three wide like it was nothing. Nevertheless, four wide. It took five wide to create an accident. Yeah, we are a half hour west of Daytona, but uh, some of these guys would have a hard time buying that. So, again, we are uh, we're getting ready here. It's 15 laps to go. Lights are still on, so it should be 13 laps to go and. 13 laps to go, 16 second laps. Uh, you can just imagine that is not a lot of time, and hopefully uh, we're done with the yellow flags for the night, but I wouldn't put it past it with the, ra the racing we've had tonight. Incredible stuff. Yeah, <laughs> incredible doesn't even begin to describe this. Corey, we're going to be coming to the end of this race here sooner than we think. These guys are going to be getting up and going here for the race win. Yes, they are, and that that nine, he took the lead about halfway, and he's been able to hold on ever since. The one has been trying to get it back, failed opportunities. He's going to have to try to pounce on this restart if he can. Pace truck is going to pull it in. Green flag in the air on the loud pedal. The one didn't get the jump he wanted up top. Nine got the restart he needed. 18 to the inside of Carmo. Oh, caution on the speedway once again. Zach the 17. Novak around, the 26 around. The 17 went up and over, barrel rolling. That that's, is the third car to go over tonight. That's Devin Ryan. You can see he made contact with the seven. And uh, that is Grip TV Nation upside down off of turn number two. But again, keeps it on all four, keeps it going. I'll give, it a, I'll give that one an 8.7. Wasn't as impressive, but he does keep it on all fours. Man, oh man. Okay, 8.8, .8. I'll be nice. 
I, I, yeah, be, be nice, Corey. Come on. So again, the laps are ticking off here, so um, I'd have to take a stab that will probably go green with about nine to go, maybe eight. And that last restart, Brandon, we haven't talked at all in the feature about Hayden Cardwell. He started back in eighth and kind of been up and down ever since, but he had an advantage. He had an opportunity. He was at the bottom of a three wide there off a of two. Uh, Lord knows where it would have went in turn three if that caution didn't come out, but another driver we have to watch out for. Yeah, he's going to be restarting in the third position here on the low side of the racetrack, so he's going to be one to watch out for Cub Greed Flag. Yes, it is, and that is lights out on the pace truck, so uh, this race coming to a conclusion very, very quickly here. Ten to go, and it's going to be nine to go once we get him down. That nine has been getting the restarts. He's been getting the jumps, but he's still going to have to hang on for nine laps and hold on a whole whole vicious pack full of drivers ready to take that win away brandon get him going jacob fields gonna be leading these guys to the green once again the outside is hauser these guys are on the throttle and they're stacking up wrecking big time wreck and that is the call that is the caution flag again this may be the final one brandon i'm not positive Oh, As we are man. running out of laps, but uh, let's take a stab at what happened here. Stack up on that restart. Yeah, oh, the 21 into Leonardi, and then that was Hudson that got into the 24, and then it's all heck broke loose there on that restart. But uh, one thing I want to watch, Brandon, I want to go back. We saw the wreck happen. I want to go watch that restart up front because I'll tell you, that was... That was going to be a big shake up there. That 18 of Cardwell got a big jump to the inside, and he backed off because of that wreck that he saw in his beer. But he had another three wide lined up off of two, and he had to back off out of it. For sure, Corey, and uh, he had to back off. But are we this restart, are we red flagged here off of two? Waiting for the pace truck? Or? We we were there moments. We, are. we were we were momentarily. The leaders red flagged, were temporarily but... red flagged. But the, everyone had to wait up for the pace truck appropriately, but seems as though we've all gotten into our places. And again, it, it probably is going to shake down, Brandon, to about a five lap dash. And we may get a, a quick green white checker if something happens quickly, but there's not going to be a lot of laps left. So I'm pretty sure this win is, in all respect, probably going to come out of the top five. At, I mean, unless absolute chaos happens, which. Again, I don't think we could put that past anything tonight, but we always do it on this channel. Well, I guess we do it on our channel, but we're doing it on this channel tonight. Take a pick. Um, well, I'm going to go with Fields and that night machine. And, well, this is an interesting dynamic. That one was scored as the leader. I didn't even catch that. I yeah, was, How I, Hauser's going to be bringing these guys to the green flag and this time by is next these time guys by. get ready to go green. Oh, it, it's next time by, Brandon. That was your time to be a little over over anxious. Well, well I, I got excited, too. It, it happens. But it happens yeah, the so days. remember, the nine was leading him down for five, six restarts in a row, leading the last 20, 30 laps of this race. But the one got scored as the leader there. So now, can that nine get back by? Well, Brandon says yes. I'm going to say no. I'm giving it to the one. You got uh, all the fans take your picks as well. We're going to find out together in about five and a half laps here at Volusia. See who's going to take home the ultimate race win here tonight. Brandon, get him going once again. Uh, what we believe will be the final time for tonight. These guys on the throttle. Green flag is in the air. And the one got the jump he needs is going to put Cardwell in a second. Now Cardwell is going to be going for the money here, and he's going to have a minimal interruption because that nine is caught up, and they've fallen back quite a bit third on back. Here we come to four to go. Caution Look at the three is wide. out. That may, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the race, the eight of Chad Carter upside down in turn number three. Pretty sure that's going to be the race. Let's try. Oh, it's kind of hard to tell. So much going on here off of the corners. Trying to see what did happen. Oh, a little bit late there to the action. That was, uh, I think that was the 27. That was uh, upside down. Oh, backwards there off the corner. But 
there's a chance, Brandon, we're going to get a one lap shootout. There's a chance. Uh, I don't, there is a, ch a chance. So what you're saying? No, I don't think I don't I don't think that there's a chance. You don't. Uh, nope. There's not a chance. There, there's no there's no chance. There's no chance. If the lights go out this time by. Come on, fill me in. You're supposed to say there's a chance. There, there there's a chance. How long they, have we been doing this and we don't know how to finish each other's sentences yet? There's a chance. <laughs> All, right. All right, so that is what we're looking for. If the lights go out on that pace truck, it is going to be a one-lap shootout. If it doesn't, then we will just uh, frolic along at 35 miles an hour and finish this race out. And the survey says one-lap shootout. I, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't Who's have a seat. I don't have it. a seatbelt on this in my seat now. I wish I did. And I think everybody in this field is they're back buckling these belts tight one more time. It's going to be a half mile dash to settle the iRacing late model showdown at Volusia. Who's going to get it? Is it going to be the one of Hauser? Is it going to be the 18 of Cardwell? Is it going to be Fields, Cap Runner, anybody else? We're going to find out in half a lap, well, half of a mile of action. Pace trucks in green, flag of the air for one lap. Going down into quarter number one, contact between the one and the 18. That sends him off the track. Here comes the Ida Fields. Right on his back, bumper now. Gonna be three wide for that second position. Down at a quarter number four. Dylan Hauser sails it off. He's gonna get the win of Lucia. Three wide it was for second, but Hauser was able to pull away and take home the win in a very, very thrilling and very chaotic race here at Volusia, but exciting finish, one lap shootout, and the number one on the one lap shootout puts it in P1 here tonight. Amazing show. Unbelievable. I'm... I'm speechless. That was awesome racing all night. And at the end of the night, Dylan Hauser, that one machine, comes home with the victory. Yeah, just going quickly back and watching some of that last restart. You saw them go three wide for second on into turn three, and that just nullified any chance anybody had at taking a three wide stab or any kind of stab at the one. He just had to run a nice safe corner number three and four, which is what he did and uh, obviously did it successfully. So uh, let's just go in and give you the final rundown of the results here tonight from the Volusia Speedway Park. Taking home the victory here tonight after the 50 lap feature was Dylan Hauser leading 21 laps. Kendall Tucker with a second. Jacob Fields led the most, 29, but he'll have to settle for the third place finish. Aiden Cardwell in fourth, Blake Cannon in fifth, Zach Leonardi in sixth, and Jeremy Capron in seventh, Dylan Fox, Jason Minat, and David Kalb rounding out your top ten in the feature. Then we have Tyler Hudson in eleventh, Randall Carter in twelfth, Tyler Ducharme in thirteenth, Dan Smolders in fourteenth, Cole Newhoffen in fifteenth, and the remaining of the results will flash by on your screen. So Brandon, it was our first broadcast here on the iRacing Esports Network, and I don't think we could have asked for much more. We saw intense battles in the heats, we saw intense battles in the transfer spots, we saw a hectic consolation in well, the B C main and the B main, and it came down to a thriller in the feature with the one lap shootout. Yeah, uh, I'm still speechless about that final lap and uh, everything. There were three almost four wide off of four for that second position. Uh, it was awesome racing all night between the heat races, the consolation races, and, and the transfer positions, and, and for the wins, and it all came down to this. It was awesome. It was the definition of dirt racing, and we saw it here live on the iRacing Esports Network. Yes, we did. We saw the, the iRacing Late Model Showdown here on PTR TV on the iRacing Esports Network. If you're not subscribed to the iRacing Esports Network that you're watching right now, of course, you want to hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't checked us out, primetimeracing.tv, check us out for our content on that channel. 
So again, an exciting night of racing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We enjoyed calling it out here in the booth here tonight. It's Corey Silva and Brandon Krutz here on the iRacing Esports Network signing out. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll catch you next time. Have a great night. We'll catch you next time, everybody.